Okay. Um, well, I, I appreciate your, your allowing me to record it because it does make things a lot simpler in that respect. Um, so to get started, I, I actually think I want to take something of an unusual approach to the interview with you because usually um, in sort of preparing for these interviews and doing my research, people have sort of a – their background is sort of – it fits – creativity and new product development in a very particular way, but I have to say that your background strikes me as much more eclectic because you you have a, you have a company that you run, you sort of have this this academic interest that you've done in terms of publishing, you've um, you, you've got this list of the 20 most innovative companies that you assemble, and so it really seems like you you kind of have a lot of different viewpoints on that, and so what I, I thought I'd do first is to sort of just ask you to comment a little bit on your background and how you became interested in this and how it's relevant to what you're doing today uh, uh, and so forth. Does that make sense? Uh, interested in, you mean, what you're going to be asking me about? or just in Yeah, the just in the, in, the, in the general issue of innovation and creativity in the area of new product development, sort of how did you become so involved in thinking about these issues and what is, what is, what is how does that affect your current focus, for example, with O-Going or um, anything else? Uh, no, that's great. Uh... Well, I mean, I think since I moved to Silicon Valley, if I go back in time to 1997, I want to say, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I moved to Silicon Valley in 1997. We used to be in Austin before I was working at IBM. And I think uh, that was the change, you know, in the sense of working, you know, from kind of a larger outfit, you know, where you're contributing, but you're one of uh, thousands or tens of thousands <laughs> mm -hmm. versus now coming in the Silicon Valley and, you know, working, you know, on my first startup, you know, which was Ecom Live, you know, where we had the product, uh, you know, which we uh, Christian it later on, you know, the name was Rendezvous and then we made it Visual Rendezvous and and really that it was almost like, uh, you know, I've been an engineer, you know, computer engineer, computer software engineer and, you know, I was on the software development side so far, you know, with my experience mm -hmm. at IBM and the one before, which was the Honeywell Bull, uh, which is which became Bull HN eventually. Uh, it was really now thinking through about, you know, not just developing great software, but, you know, what are the, the benefits of making the software? I mean, who, why should somebody care about it? You know, what, what is the customer... Uh, value proposition, you know, so I mean, I started thinking of all that because, you know, I essentially joined a startup, right? And when you're in a startup, you, you start wearing multiple hats. <laughs> right. And what... Not only what... Go ahead. Okay, can you comment on some of the... You mentioned you, this is your fourth startup. What were some of the other startups you were involved in? No, this was my first startup. Oh, first startup. Uh, after, after I moved to Silicon Valley, right? So before that, I was in larger companies, right? So... Mm -hmm. Honeywell Bull was a huge company. Then it became Bull HN, you know, which is, uh, uh, this was in Phoenix, and then I was at IBM. So, again, uh, I'd only worked in large companies before, so this was my first foray into working for a small startup when I moved to Silicon Valley. And what, how did you get involved in sort of assembling this, this list of the 20 most innovative companies? Well, that actually was much recent. So this was something uh, late, uh, I want to say, 2006 uh, is uh, kind of, uh, so after being in multiple startups, after moving to Silicon Valley where I was at Ecom Live, that uh, was for two and a half years, which is really where I started honing in on the whole field of product uh, management and product marketing, well, how do you really create, you know, innovative uh, software in this scenario, you know, that you can bring to the marketplace and, and really make a market around it, right? So that was my first foray. Then I, after Ecom Live, I was at WebEx for about six years, uh, you know, and uh, after WebEx, I was, uh, again, at WebEx, I was a product manager where I launched uh, multiple products at WebEx, you know, again, software products. Uh, you know, we delivered software as a service. Mm -hmm. so again, that's where my background was, you know, increasingly creating uh, innovative software products, uh, launching them in the marketplace, growing them to become market share leaders. And 
Uh, once I was beyond my WebEx days, you know, which is in the 2006 time frame, you know, I was consulting for uh, another company out of India, uh, you know, which is uh, Educomp. They're the largest e-learning provider. So I did that for about six to nine months. And then I was really trying to figure out what is the next thing I want to do on my own now. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so that's kind of uh, was a crossroad, if you may, late 2006 time frame per se. I did a, a really good uh, education through eCornell, which could be of interest to you because that's where uh, there was a whole section of classes I took, which is part of the executive certification called leading management teams. And as part of that, some of the courses were about leading through creativity. Mm. So whereas I'd done all that before and where I was doing things, you know, uh, uh, as a software product marketer and product manager, that kind of education kind of brought it full circle. I said, oh, now I need to create my own branch, so to speak. Were you doing this at Stanford? Stanford's well known for their, some of their being out in front on creativity, innovation, and education, or was it somewhere else? So the E Cornell, Cornell. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I missed that. Um, well, yeah, Cornell University. So that's kind of. So in 2006 is when I said, well, you know, how do I really put together an innovation index? Because you know, one is. Uh, uh, so I'm still a student. So I was like, how do I really understand? You know, how is it that all these great companies? You know, uh, you know, I read Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, and you know, I'm like, okay, you know, how do these companies really make that? leap from good to great, you know, for, per se, you know, and what, what has innovation and creativity to do with that? Well, let me ask there, you that. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I, well, I, I, was, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but at, well, it makes me think of a question. Um, so what, what, after all of your studies and dedications to this, has, has made you convinced is the key to innovation, successful innovation and successful creativity? What are the factors that you see as particularly critical that affects your mindset? Uh, well, I mean, you know, obviously you have to have a product vision, right? So, I mean, the first and foremost is what are you planning to innovate about, right? I mean, it could be a product, a process, a service. Mm -hmm. One is, and and that doesn't come to everybody, right? I mean, you've got to have that vision of what is it that you are looking at. You know, many times if you are in a business, uh, you know, it happens because, you know, your customer is calling and, you know, they're calling about some issues <laughs> that they're having with the current product. And, uh, you know, in the process of solving that, uh, you know, uh, you know, challenges, you know, you, you probably strike some new opportunities in the process, you know, so that happens too. But, but by and large, if you're trying to generate something totally new, like what uh, Steve Jobs would do, right, or create a new iPad or an iPod or whatever, mm -hmm. and his team, I mean, I think uh, that those are visionary. So first and foremost, I mean, you've got to have that visionary thought process about what is it uh, that the market is, is, you know, looking for or, or going to be looking for, uh, and that, I think is foremost. If you're going to, I'm talking about breakthrough innovation now. You know, I mean, so that vision of creating uh, a new product, a new service, a new process. Uh, you know, that that comes either from instinct, you know, that you've developed over years, or or that comes from uh, some kind of acumen that you have about a certain market or a certain industry. You know, through experience. And, uh, for example, the founders at WebEx, you know, they had the vision that, you know, the world is going to be all about online meetings, and, and they stuck with that vision, although there were other providers, you know, doing similar things, but, but really they made it, you know, a much bigger, uh, you know, company out of that. They are certainly so, looking quite prescient at this point, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they made a lot of money, too, in the process. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me ask you. Um, you, what's, what's so interesting? So that was the first ingredient. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Yeah, no, keep, continue your thought. I'm sorry. So that I think is the first and foremost to creating innovative products is having that visionary thought process about what the changing, uh, you know, I would say the ecosystem or landscape of demand is going to be. Okay. And uh, I think that is is key. And then, of course, once you have that, then the execution of it is the key, right? I mean, it's, you probably see everybody going about lots of ideas, but how many of them actually put ideas into fruition? And, and to execute that, that is is a lot of work, you know, that needs a lot of passion, that needs a lot of drive, that needs perseverance, 
you got to be very optimistic about what you really want to do is almost to the point you've got to be a little bit crazy about it too, 